friends, it's Carolyn Zuck here with CZIC Stitch, and today I'm going to talk about how I store my embroidery floss. So this is still a work in progress. Um, I have my DMC pretty much exactly how I want it. My fancy floss, I am just waiting on uh, the system that I use. She is currently working on um, creating an a similar system for the fancy floss, but I'll go over all of that in just a few minutes. Uh, so I use, let me just start out and tell you what I, what I use. So I use a binder system. Um, you can see here DMC, well D, <laughs> this is the D, um, and she has M and C so that when they're all lined up on your um, bookshelf or wherever you keep them, you can see in order DMC and then she gives you the number, the numbers that is in that book. This is from Floss Anthology on Etsy. I of course will link it down below. Um, and it's just it's a it's a binder system. So I will go over it in more detail for you. But a few disclaimers first of all. Um, this is not a sponsored video in any way. Shona, who is the owner and the creator behind Floss Anthology, doesn't even know I'm making this video. Um, I will send it to her afterwards in case she wants to watch it. She is uh, a, a, a cross-stitcher as well. Um, so I will send it to her afterwards, but I, uh, she, I'm not getting anything in return for this video. Uh, I heard about the system through Tammy from Tammy's Crafty Life. So I will link her channel down below. She has a floss tube video as well about how she, about the system. So it might be beneficial. Hers is about half an hour long. I have no idea how long mine is going to be. Maybe about the same. Um, watch hers and also watch mine because mine was largely inspired by Tammy. And maybe we do some things differently. Maybe we do some things the same. I think it's pretty much the same because I've been asking Tammy a lot of questions about how do you do this? How do you handle that? So go watch Tammy's uh, video on how she stores her um, her floss setup. Um, but know that I got this idea from Tammy. So Tammy is my inspiration slash enabler. This system, it's not inexpensive. I will say that. It is um, not a cheap system. I did a lot of research before I went with the system. I watched Tammy's video a few times and really sat down and thought about how would I use it, you know, in similar ways that Tammy is or in different ways. Uh, so, and I saved up, you know, for a while before I purchased the system. Shona is located in Australia. Uh, so shipping is expensive. Uh, but I will talk about that a little bit later in the video. So I, I I will also talk about ways that I think you can make it more cost effective if this particular system is not in your in your budget. But first up, let me talk about what I've tried in the past and why they didn't work for me. Um, and everyone has their own space constraints, budget constraints, um, things they like, things they don't like, that type of thing. I started out, like I think most of us, using bobbins. Uh, and as time went on, I I found I didn't love, it was okay. Um, it took a lot of time to wind the bobbins, which I didn't love. At first it didn't really bother me, and then it does take a lot of time. And some people find that very therapeutic, which I can totally see why you would find that therapeutic. Uh, for me, it's not therapeutic. It's it's kind of like a chore. Um, so I didn't find that very relaxing to wind bobbins. And so it was just like another thing I had to do to get to the stitching. Now, you know I love to organize uh, and plan. And for me, that's fun. And that doesn't feel like a chore. Other people would say planning, that sounds like such a chore to me. I don't want to spend my time planning when I could be stitching. I sort of felt the same way with bobbinating, right? That um, it's something I have to do. It's not relaxing for me, but I know other people might find it relaxing. Also, I didn't love how kind of bulky the um, bobbins got with um, as you were uh, bobbinating them, right? When you get a whole skein on there, they get kind of bulky. Um, so I didn't love that. And then I would take one out of my, I had the double-sided case. And so you would take one out and 
all the others would flop around. It was just, I, I wanted, I thought there had to be a better system for me. Um, some people also don't like bobbinating because um, of the kinks in the floss. The kinks never really bothered me until I took them off the bobbins and put them in like on floss drops and stuff. But the kinks in the on the that the bobbins give don't bother me. And for me, I never could see it in my stitching. So I wouldn't worry about that. If you enjoy bobbinating, especially if you find it relaxing, um, keep doing that. The kinks don't bother me at all. Um, and I know you can iron it or put like a damp sponge over it or something like that to take those kinks out. But I never did that uh, when I bobbinated and, and they really didn't, didn't bother me. So then I went to like a plastic shoe box with Ziploc baggies and index cards. And I liked that for a while because it was nice and easy. And if I had multiple skeins, um, I could just tuck them into the Ziploc baggie. And that worked for a while, but I found it took up quite a bit of space, um, which is fine. I mean, I, I could have space here, um, but it did take up a lot of space because once you get the Ziploc baggies full, I mean, they take up, so I had several shoe boxes that were kind of flitting around and uh, it wasn't kind of the best for me and the most concise. And I found the Ziploc baggies to be super slippery. So again, I would take one or two out and everything would fall over and um, certain colors would slide underneath. And it was just, that didn't last very long, honestly. Next, I tried... Annie's Keepers. Uh, Annie's Keepers uh, is the little, I don't have any right here. I should have pulled them out, but the little, they're like acrylic floss drops and you put them on a rod and you put the rod in a file box. Um, I like that a lot. Um, although I did find it takes up quite a bit of space and it's quite cumbersome. Um, and by that, I mean, all the file boxes I have tried, so the um, the file the file uh, rods that you use, they knock down really easily for for me anyway. When I tried several different types of file boxes, and they would easily knock down uh, when you reach in, um, and also the floss kind of pools at the bottom of the box and. You know, it doesn't get super tangly, but it just doesn't look neat and, and nice for me, which inside a box, it does not matter. <laughs> I realize that. Um, but it just got kind of cumbersome. And then I have this big file box, which really can only sit in certain spaces in my house. And then I have this kind of ugly, frankly, it was like the one that worked the best was like this plastic file box that um, was kind of ugly. I will say I do love uh, the Annie keeper, Annie's keepers, uh, floss drops. And I'll also talk about that in a few minutes. And then Tammy came into my life and changed my world. <laughs> uh, angels started singing, the heavens opened up and we found floss anthology. And I think this is the system that's going to work long-term for me. So I'm so excited. Like I said, Shona is the Etsy seller. She is in Australia. She is wonderful. She will work with you uh, for um, whatever you have questions on, anything like that. She answered a bunch of my questions. She was very um, quick turnaround in terms of answering my questions. So let me show you. So here's the cover. Now you could put something in the front cover because so, it has that um, front cover if you wanted to. I don't feel a need to do that. But you have her little signature there. And then this is just, I just pulled one book. Um, I did take a video of these sitting on my cabinets, in my cabinets that are right behind me. So I will insert that in a few minutes, not quite yet. But, and so when you open it up, over here is a pocket here. And this is a chart of everything that's in the pocket or in this book. I'm probably not really going to use it, but it's nice to have. And you could use this as your um, your chart of what you have, anything like that, um, your inventory chart if you wanted to. I'll talk about how I inventory in a minute. Okay, so this is not a good page. But let me, so 
it, it has, let me pull out a page for us to take a look at. I thought I was prepared and I'm not as prepared as I thought. Okay, so this book has, I don't know how many pages I could count. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, maybe 12 pages uh, in this particular binder. This binder is probably a one and a half, maybe two inch binder. Um, all three binders for the DMC are the same size. And so what it is, is it's, this is plastic. And for the DMC, I like the long pages. She sells them in long pages and short pages. So short page, which would work for your fancy floss, or if you like shorter lengths of DMC, you can do that as well. A short page would just be this long uh, without the flap. Okay, so, and you get all the labels um, and you have to put them in here. This is what I worked on this summer. You put them in here and then you put your floss in here. You can see I'm missing number 10, but this is the most full <laughs> page that I have. Um, look how pretty it is to see all your floss like that. And it's super easy to say, hey, I'm going to the store. Joanne's is having one of their floss sales. What do I need? I actually wrote it down on a separate notepad, but I can say, oh, I need number 10 and then I'll complete this page. So it's almost like a fun game for me at this point because I'm like, what do I need to complete a page? Um, and I have a list now where like if friends and family ask, what do you want for your birthday or what do you want for Christmas? I can be like, oh, um, you want to help me complete a page in my DMC collection? Because I would like to collect them all just because, you know, it's a thing. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, along with this, you get um, one of these tools. So this is kind of funny looking. Um, this is the tool that you use to put the floss into the pages. Now this one, you get a few, you get one, there's something stuck on it. It's like a piece of floss that doesn't want to come off. These are like nice plastic slash cardboard. Um, I have a bunch here. She sends you several, um, you know, you can put one in each book if you want. Um, you can see this one's a little bent up. Um, I use the same one for all of my DMC this summer. And it still works. I mean, yeah, it's a little beat up, but it still works just fine. And what it does, what it has is it has a little hook here on this end. You see that? Um, so you, when you are de-skeining a floss, I pull it all out from the skein. I line up the two ends and then I just put the ends together and I keep going till I get the length I want. Um, and then you put the loop end on here. Well, actually, first what you do, so you can see these are different channels in here. So if I were to put one in right here, so I'm just sliding it in the number 10 spot. Let's pretend that we have number 10 and the hook in goes in first and you just slide it in. I'm just sliding it in. I know you can't really, let me put you down here. You can see a little bit better. I'm just sliding it in like this until it gets to the end and you can see my flap is out the other side and you can see here that she has kind of a handle on it and it can't get it can't get stuck inside there because this handle prevents it from doing so. Then what you do is you loop your thread on this end, you fold this over and you do have to kind of hold on to this a little bit and with your other hand you pull. You pull, you pull, you pull. And you can see like if there's floss hanging off of this end it's now captured under that channel. And then you just pull, pull, pull. It's gonna pull the thread in for you. And when you get, <clears throat> when, you, when you see that hook end getting close to the top here, you wanna take your thumb and hold onto the hook when it comes out the channel. Otherwise it's gonna um, throw your, your um, floss off. And you just go like that. And then when it's where you want it, you just unhook it and you're ready for the next one.
So that's how it works. I hope that made sense without actually having a skein of floss to do it. It does take a little bit of time. Like, I mean, anytime you're converting a system, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but, and then there are a couple of different ways you can use this. So you can use this by um, just taking, like if you work from your master set. So this is going to be my master set. I should have said that. This is going to be my master set. Um, but you could use this as your working set if you want. If you just want to take one thread, you just take your needle under there, just like you do on a thread keep. And you pull it out, and there you go. The only problem with this is not even, it's not even a problem, but something to think about is that if you have leftover thread, what are you going to do with it? Well, a couple options. You could pull out the remaining thread that you have, put in your, your remaining thread, and then re-thread it through. Um, that would take time. <laughs> that will take, you know, more time than, than what it has. So I'll talk about what I'm doing in the meantime, but this is going to be my master set. Um, you can probably fit. So like if you have two full skeins of number 01, you could fit two full skeins in here. Um, I did at the beginning. So I kind of changed partway through. I think, um, my first book might be a little bit different than the last two. Um, but what I would like to do is get to the point where I have one skein, one full skein in my master set. Um, and then I know it's there and I can draw from that. Um, at the beginning, the first book I did, some of these have two, two full skeins, um, which is a little bulky, but it works. The only thing is, is that you don't want to stretch out, and Tammy brought up this point, you don't want to stretch out these channels too much because if you were trying to, say, put three uh, skeins in here, it's going to stretch out the plastic, and then it might not properly fit when you go back to put, like, one skein in because it's going to be stretched out. Now, of course, I haven't run into that, but... Um, that's a possibility. So I would keep it to one skein, two at the most. Um, and yeah, it's just a really great system and it's so pretty looking and it's so nice and neat. And I love it too, because if you have a bookshelf at home, you can just set these on your bookshelf and they're, they're very mobile. Look at this. See, here's another one. I need one more color to finish that book. Look at this. And you can just look at how pretty your colors are. I mean, I just, I love it. I think it's a genius system. It is like the system I've been waiting for that I didn't even know existed. Now, let me show you one thing. So when you get the labels, the labels come like this. These are a bunch of discontinued DMC. She still sent you the labels. I didn't use these, so that's why I have them left over. They actually come with a uh, hook on it. So if you look at the website, uh, at the Etsy shop, um, you will see that it has this extra piece on it. And after watching Tammy's video, so Tammy has some that are on some of this little, what you're supposed to do here, I'll just show you an example. Um, if I can remember. So what you're supposed to do, so you can fold it in half. This is sticky on this side, right? So what you do is you actually can put the um, floss around this hook right here. Um, and it, like I said, it's sticky, so it all sticks together. And so that you you can hang your floss from here. Um, these though, because they're sticky, they're not really gonna be reusable. Uh, so what Tammy did is she just clipped off this, this flap and just uh, put <clears throat> the numbers in here. And that's what I did because I thought that was a really great idea based on how I was going to use this. I just, when I was setting up my system, I would take my list and I would just take my scissors and I would cut off the little flap. And then you just, um, you don't have that flap on and you just fold this in half and it sticks together. And then that's what I would insert into, into the, um, the little channel up here. So these are not stuck on, these are inserted into a channel um, and they fit real nice and snug in there. So what I like about the system, so I'll do pros and cons. So what I really love about the space saving, it's a great space saver. 
if you have a bookshelf, you can fit three binders on it, you're done. Um, I love it. I love it for that. It's easy to access. So all your, all your DMC is right here in one place. You don't have to go hunting. My hair is being really weird. You don't have to go hunting for like, um, a file box or, or something like that. Right. Um, so it's, I feel like it's really easy access. You just grab what you need and you go. Um, it protects the floss really nicely. So they are nice and snug and safe in here. Um, you know, the sun isn't going to get to them. I'm not worried about a crease in here. I mean, that's no more of a crease than bobbinating. So yeah, there might be a little crease in there over time, but it won't show like in your work any more than like bobbinating would. Um, and frankly, I like it cause it looks nice. Like I said, like it's so pretty to look at a page all nice and neat, um, in your book and to see it just sitting there and the color, like, look at that. Like this, looking at things like this just spark my creativity. Um, so I do love that. So some of the cons, like I said, it's not an inexpensive system. It is expensive and shipping from Australia to like the U S is very expensive. It is not a cheap system. Um, it does also take time to initially set up um, like any system would, but this one maybe takes quite a bit of time. But once you're set up, you're set up. Um, so I think it's well worth the time. The other thing I want to point out is the sizing. So this is, she is from Shona, is from Australia. Um, so these binders um, are not the U.S. standard size binders. They are actually the larger size. Um, you can save money on shipping by providing your own binders, but you need to realize that these are not just like the normal binders you can go at to Office Max or wherever and, and grab. These are the bigger size. I looked online when I was getting ready to order this because then if you don't get the binders, you're just paying basically to ship, you know, the pages and, and the stickers, and that's going to cut way down on your shipping costs. However, um, I looked and these binders are very expensive. The size is very expensive to get here in the U.S. Um, from where I look. Now, I didn't spend a ton of time researching it, but I did look around quite a bit. And I did find some that were like, you know, if you bought them in bulk for like 12, well, I'm like, well, I don't need 12 of these binders. And then I'm just sitting around. So I... I ended up just getting the binders directly from her and then it's all done and set up. Now you could buddy up with a friend or two and see if you can get a deal on the right size binders here in the U S. So like if you buy them in bulk, you know, get 12 of them, um, then that might work for you if you have a couple of buddies or friends. Um, yeah. And I think the really, the other thing is organized they can fit anywhere. So you don't need a special place like where am I going to put this file folder or not file folder, but like this file box, where am I going to fit that? Um, I know I've said it a few times, but these are just going to go on your bookshelf. And I love that. I think it's so convenient. Um, okay. So like I said, I am using these binders as my master set. So when I kit up a project, well, let me, let me, over this first. So I'm going to try to collect the whole set. Um, I'm using that as my master set. So what am I doing in the meantime? So what if I have a project that I've pulled from my master set and I'm still, um, there's still floss left. Well, I'm using one of these, which I think a lot of you have seen. These are the photo boxes. You can get them at Michael's or Joanne's. You can get them on Amazon too, but Michaels and Joann's often have them on sale for 15 bucks or so. Um, so wait till you get a sale or a coupon even. And this is my entire DMC set. Okay, so some of them I did buddy up because I have a lot of floss in there. You can see I have one blank one here at the top. That one's not used yet. I'll use it for overflow. So what this is, is... This is my partially used floss. So let me show you. 
So this particular, this is probably a better example. This particular box are my 100s and 200s. I don't have very many of them, so I figured I can lump those together. Um, I put it on a ring, and I am still using, these are the Annie Keepers um, floss drops. I'm still using these. I love them because they are so reusable. They're sturdy. I think you can get 300 of these for like 60 bucks, which sounds like a lot of money, and it is. But also, like, if you were to buy these like off of Etsy or anything, they're going to be way more expensive. So these are still the Annie's Keepers that I'm still using uh, for how I um, kit up a project. I will put them on Annie's Keepers. So these are not full skeins, but partially used skeins from other projects. And so I will come here first to this box um, when I'm kitting up a project to see if I have what I need. Okay. So that's basically how I am using this box. Now, because I have not had a system, like a good system in place, I have a lot of leftover DMC. So, and I went through this summer and I collected all the like wayward DMCs around and put it all together. And so that, it feels so good. So everything I have, I know where it is, it's accounted for. So I did have a lot of leftovers. So I got this secondary box. This is a smaller one, two, three, four, five, six photo box. There's just six. I also got the St. Michael's. There's six boxes in here. And this one I use, I call it my spares box. So, and my blanks box. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So um, when I have used up a skein, say I'm done with a project, I used up a skein of floss. Now I have the Annie's Keepers floss tag. Well, there's no need for me to like take off the number. Um, I'll just put it in my blanks box and I'll know that I don't need to create another Annie's Keepers tag for my next project. I'll just pull it from here. Maybe not a necessary step, but that's the way I do it. So I'm like, oh, I already have some blanks in here. And like you can see all these blanks. I have a bunch. I don't know why I have so many blanks uh, at the beginning of the numbers. And then I also have my spares. And this is mostly because it wouldn't fit in the main box. Um, so things like this is, I have a bunch, whole bunch of B5200. These aren't all going to fit in my main box simply because I have so much because I, like I said, I just buy new um, floss with every kit, with every project that I kit up. And that is going to stop now. Um, so I have a whole bunch. So you can see I have a whole bunch of spares in here. So this is my spares and blanks, mostly because they won't fit in the regular, but eventually um, this uh, bin, hopefully like the goal, right, is that this bin will be used up and then everything will just be in the one file box. So how do I keep track of it all? Um, well, I created an inventory list. <laughs> Talk about nerding out, huh? Um, okay, so this is my DMC inventory list, and I printed it. Um, so it's one, one printout for each binder. I thought I was going to keep them in the binders, but now I'm not, and I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. So I just pulled the DMC list from various lists online, so it's not like I made up the list, right? So I just pulled from whatever online. I have my number, so the DMC number, I have the color name, and I have these categories, binder, box, blanks, kitted, and this category, which I kind of started after I had already printed all these, would be spares, meaning full skeins that aren't anywhere else. So binder means, is this in my master set? Box means, is it in the, the already used, already um, threaded on the thread keep box? Um, blanks, do I already have a blank uh, Annie's Keeper thread drop? Um, is it kitted? I have it, but it's currently kitted in a project somewhere. And then again, these are the spares. So I know like, wow, I have a lot of B5200. Look at all those spares I have. Um, and the way I will use this document when I go to kit up a project, so I haven't started anything since I've done the system, is I'm going to go, I'm going to pull this out. And I'll go to my list and I'll first look at the box because I know those are already partially used. They're not pulling from my master set. 
they're partially used. So I'll say, do I have it in my box? Um, if yes, then I'll pull it out and I'll, I'll erase it and I'll put that it's kitted. Maybe I'll put the project name in there. I'm not sure. Um, and so I'll put that it's kitted. If it's not in the box, then I'll look, okay, well, do I have it in the binder? Yes, it's in the binder. Or do I have a spare that I can just erase the spare? Because it doesn't make, like, it's the same thing, right? Like, if I say number one, white tin, so I have it in the binder, I have a blank, and I have a spare. Um, if I need it for a project, I don't have anything in the box. So if I were to kit up a project that said, we need number one, white tin, I would probably pull out my blank, erase that, and I would pull my spare and just leave this one alone and erase the spare and then put it as kitted. I hope that makes sense. Um, so I just did that with everything. I mean, it's all the same. You know, I love a good inventory list. So that was really fun for me. It did take quite a lot of time. But again, once you have it all up and running, it's up and running, right? Um... So I also made them for the fancy flosses, classic color work. So you can see here, now I knew that I was going to have spares. So I have binder, box, blanks, kitted spares. Now I don't have nearly as many of the, of the fancy floss that I have as, as like at DMC. Um, but you could see like, okay, here's Candy DMs, classic color works. I have one that will go in the binder and one in spares. Now, speaking of the binder, so Shona has been asked repeatedly, apparently, um, for uh, a similar setup, but for fancy floss. So she is currently working on that, she told me. Um, and what that will look like is it will essentially be the same thing. It's just instead of your, so again, this is a long page. Instead of a long page, you'll have short pages, which will just be this length. Because for fancy floss, you know, you don't want them too, too long. Um, otherwise, they'll, they tend to get knotted. So she is working on that. It is not out yet. Um, I did check right before this, before I filmed, and it's not out yet. You know, it's a lot of work. She has to create the labels and figure out the binder system. But I plan on getting the binder system, at least for the three big ones, at least. Classic Color Works, Gassed and Weeks Dye Works. Uh, she said, she did say she also has color and cotton um, that she was working on. So I do have a list of color and cotton. The only thing with color and cotton for me is that I used to belong to their Thread of the Month Club, which is great. I love it. But a lot of the names have changed since I was in that club. So this is my list of like non-current names. So I'm not sure. I mean, I do have a lot of them. I'm just, I'm not sure if I will actually get a binder set up for uh, color and cotton or not. But it's the exact same setup. I have a, a box just like this with my fancy floss. And I have about two of the little photo boxes per fancy floss. Um, I can show it to you. Hold on just a minute. While I'm going to get that box, I'm going to insert a video clip here of me showing you how it uh, the binders and all that look on uh, in my cabinet, which is the one with the blue uh, blue bu back bucket <laughs> sitting on. Uh, so I will uh, insert that video here while I go grab um, the other box. Okay, so I just wanted to show you inside this cabinet. Um, this is the entire set of DMC. So you can see it does not take up much space at all. Um, I have all this space for additional binders, for uh, fancy floss when they come out. And my entire DMC set is right there and then extras are down here. This is extra um, fancy floss. And then this is like kind of overflow because the stuff has not been organized before. And now that it's organized, I realize how much kind of repeated uh, flosses I have. So hopefully the goal is that eventually this will go away as I use what I have in my stash um, instead of buying just all new floss every time I start a new project. Okay, bye. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that quick little video and saw how nice and neat it can stay on the shelves. 
The other thing I forgot to mention is she will do, like if you're working on a haid, um, she will do a, a project, like a binder set for you. I did get one for a stitching shelf. Um, however, I don't know that it's going to work super well because again, what do you do? It's a great idea, but what do you do with the leftover pieces? Like if you just have one stitch, I mean, I guess you could just, um, park it, but you know, I'm doing the max color one. And so it's very confetti heavy. And so there might not be anywhere to park that thread. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to save those binders and use them for when she comes out with the fancy floss because I think I can just reuse them. Um, but anyway, so here is my fancy floss. And basically right now, the way I have it is I have like classic, um, classic color works A through L. And they're just all in here. All of them are in here because I'm just waiting for the binders um, but I'm using it the exact same way where these are all the ones that need to go in the binders. And then these are the ones that have been partially used. Again, I'm putting them on Annie's keepers and you can see balsam fir classic color works CCW so that I know if I just need a couple, um, a couple threads of this, that it can go right back in this box for my next project. And then these would all be the ones that would go into the binder, binder system as like a master set. So I have two, like A through L and M through Z seem to work pretty well for me for the fancy flosses and what I have. Now, of course, I have just joined the Classic Color Works and the Weeks Dye Works Thread of the Month Clubs through uh, uh, um, Stitch, uh, not Stitch Quarterly, uh, Fat Quarter Shop. Um, so we'll see how well that goes. Um, this is my color and cotton. So you can see I have a ton of color and cotton. Uh, so I think I might actually get the binders or maybe I'll reuse, I just get the sheets and reuse because I don't have a lot of them and not a lot. I found not a lot of patterns call for color and cotton and you can definitely do, um, like a floss tosh, change out the colors. I tend not to do that a whole lot. So what I'm thinking is I might just ask her to give her a list of things, because she will do custom labels for you as well. So I might just send her a list of kind of what I have and see if she'll do custom labels for me and just use my the, the binders that I bought for the stitching shelf. And then I have gas, same thing, A through L and M through Z. So it's the same thing, just waiting on the binders. I did have Victoria, uh, Vic, Victorian Motto Sampler Shop in here. Um, I had a couple. I just have a couple. I just have a few. These will just stay in here. I'm not going to put them in a binder because I don't have many of them. And I don't plan on like collecting all of them like I do the, the big ones, right? The main ones. Um, and then here's my Weeks Dye Works, which is kind of bursting at the seams. I have two empty ones, uh, two empty bins that are just waiting for something. And then I have just kind of like one with like random cotton threads. Um, so like we got a skein of uh, Rami's creations at the Stitching in the Wild. Um, and so this is where I'm going to store kind of my, like they're not going to have a whole book for it. Um, and including some of my DMC that is like the variegated. Because I only have a couple. They don't need their whole, a whole book or anything like that. So I thought I'll just put them in here. Um, I don't really have a tracking method for this other than open it up and look at it. And then I have one for silks, random silks that I have. Um, I made one for Rainbow Gallery, which I don't have much in here, to be honest with you. Um, I have some Whisper, which I hear people hate working with. And then I have a Krynik one, which I'm actually probably going to change the name of Krynik to just Metallics because that's probably a better I mean these are mostly Krynik in here but I have a different system for storing my Krynik which is a, a lipstick a holder that um, the Krynik fits in perfectly so um, I will no that's not what I'm doing this is Krynik this is gonna be Krynik the lipstick holder is for my beads so I'm doing a very similar system with my Mill Hill beads um, I did create a checklist for the Mill Hill beads as well. 
And I have a different system for what I, I use for the Milho beads. Let me know if you want to see that. I'll do that as a separate video um, just in case, you know, beads are different kind of, a, I mean, it's similar. I have the checklist. I'll go to my checklist to make sure I have it before ordering new. Um, and if I don't, I'll order it. But as I'm like, I'm really enjoying the Milho kit that I'm working on. And I hope I'll have some leftover beads that I can add to that collection and so on and so forth. Um, so that, that's the system. I love it. I have so much fun putting it together. I mean, it is a lot of work, like I said, putting it together, but it's so nice to know exactly how I'm going to use it, where everything's going to go. Um, so to recap real quick, I look at the box first, then the binder. Um, and then if I need, well, box spares binder. And then if I need to purchase, I need to purchase. Um, so I'm hoping this will help me not only use what I already have, but use, like I said, with the color and cotton, like it'll help put it in front of me so I can say, oh, I could substitute this, right? So that's the plan. I don't know if I actually will, um, but that is the plan. Um, so I did have some ideas um, for ways to make a system similar to this a little bit less expensive, um, you know, you could buy any, I mean, it's back to school right now, so it's a great time to buy binders. Maybe you can get them at a discount here in the in the U.S. Um, you know, I know people have used things like CD pages that you can buy on Amazon. Um, people have used baseball card pages, so pages that are meant to hold baseball cards. Now, they're not going to be long like this, right? So you will have like, you'll have to kind of wind it up a little bit and, and put it in. Um you could use coin pages. Those might be getting a little small uh, for like a skein of floss, but it's another idea to use coin pages. Um, really anything with pockets in it um, is going to work and you can put it in a binder. Uh, so those are some options that I think could work if you didn't want to do the system. The other, the big thing too is, is partnering up with a friend. Um, so, um, you know, Tammy and I are going to partner up when she comes out with a specialty floss uh, book so that we can save on shipping. We'll split the shipping costs. It'll save us a little bit of money um, and, and just make it a little more, a little bit more doable. But like I said, Shona is wonderful to work with. She's very responsive. Um, do keep in mind if you're like in the U S um, or like Canada or anywhere like that, like it's, you know, when we're going to bed, she's getting up and vice versa. So if you are emailing her and you're not hearing from her immediately, it's because she's sleeping. <laughs> Apparently they allow her to sleep. Um, so anyway, let me know if you have questions or if there's something more you would like to see. I love the system. I'm so excited to share it with you. I hope you found that helpful and I will talk to you all next time. Bye. Bye.